Apple and Garmin are probably the biggest players in the outdoor tech world. So which one should you be buying? I asked my friend Chris, who's probably the smartest person on this subject, and I was completely blown away by which one he chose in this interview here. Chris, welcome back, my friend. I'm so glad you're back again to talk about tech again. So I wanna to talk to you about my Apple Watch. We touched base on it a little bit in the last video. My biggest problem is, is I feel like this Apple Watch Ultra is a very expensive Apple Watch. I feel like I paid probably another four or $500 for a bigger battery. Like there's really not much else to this watch. Like everybody wants the Apple Watch to be the outdoor watch. And I think the mm -hmm. reason for that is because in my opinion, and I, and I, I think I'm right on this, is that the Apple Watch is the best daily driver. And the reason for that is because everybody has an iPhone and Apple is so good at making Apple products work so well with other Apple products that when you try to introduce them, something like a Garmin watch, it works, but it doesn't do everything that the Apple watch can do seamlessly. I fell for the same thing that you did. Like when this came out, I watched that announcement and I saw like Scott Jurek, like running across, you know, people running across the Sahara and all these like ultra athletes. And I was like, this is gonna be the, the Garmin killer. This is gonna be the competition that Garmin needs for everyone to step up their game. And like you said, it's really just a bigger, you know, Apple Watch, sort of like an Apple Watch on steroids that has the longer battery, it's a little more durable, it's got the bigger crown and everything. But they really dropped the ball because they didn't they didn't really address anything for the outdoors. They just allowed third-party apps to do that. And that's how Garmin, or sorry, that's how Apple works, right? Apple has a robust app store where people can, you know, get third-party apps, but the way they were hyping it up, I thought for sure they're gonna have offline maps or Apple Maps is now gonna work for hiking trails or something like that, and it didn't. And that was, that was a bummer, and I think it's definitely a missed opportunity for Apple, but the good news is that there are a couple of really good third-party apps that you can get that will turn this so into- So that's the fix. Something like a garment, yeah. Third-party apps. Okay. There's two that I really like right now. One's called the Footpath app. And uh, it requires, if you wanna get like all the features, including the offline maps, it's a premium subscription, but you can get offline maps on your Apple Watch and you can get turn by turn directions, uh, just like following like a GPX route on a regular GPS device, or even like using Google Maps or something. So you get little pop-ups and it says, you know, at 400 feet, make a right on the Nature Loop Trail or whatever it might be. So, and then there's another one called Work Outdoors. They both require, you know, shelling out more money in addition to the $800 that you paid for your Apple Watch Ultra. But Work Outdoors has hundreds of different data screens and there's offline maps and you can make it work like a Garmin. You can customize the data screens, you can have multiple screens and it's a Garmin-like experience with those guys, with those uh, two apps, so. Okay, so you've tested out those two Apple Watch apps. What about like battery life? Because I've found that whenever I've tried to use GPS on here or on any smartwatch for the backcountry, my battery life is just, it's its gone, like instantly. Yeah, well, what, what you should do is put it in low power mode. There's like a general low power mode and there's a workout low power mode. I just put it in the general low power mode which uh, turns off the always on display. Like having the display on all the time on this just burns your battery down for no reason. Can you set up your action button on your Ultra to automatically connect to the uh, one of those apps? Yeah, you can. So they both uh, have introduced connectivity or, or functionality with the action button and you can customize what exactly it does in the settings for either Work Outdoors or Footpath. Initially, there were no apps that had uh, support for that action button. It was just the canned apps that came with the Apple Watch. Garmin's have a steeper learning curve. Everything with Apple yeah, is like super intuitive. Sure. But with, with Garmin, once you, once you learn how to use it, once you learn how to use like one Garmin watch, you can use all the Garmin watches. So I've got the, I have the Garmin Phoenix 6, whatever it is, it's like the Sapphire, yeah. the really expensive one. It was like an eight or $900 watch when I bought it. Um, and yeah. I, it's, it's collecting dust. It's literally collecting yeah. dust right now. And there's no touch screen on that. Are the newer Phoenixes, is there a newer, there's like a seven now, right? 
Yeah, so there's a Phoenix 7, and then they also made a uh, Epix, which is a cross between a Phoenix and maybe an Apple Watch. It has an AMOLED screen on the Epix, so it has a really nice screen. Um, more uh, higher resolution, more colors. You can see more trail names on it when you look at the map. And it has a touchscreen on it now, but you can disable the touchscreen. I mean, these watches are so good, whether it's the Ultra or the Phoenix or the Epix, the, the GPS is good, the battery life is good. I think it meets, these things meet the needs of people, you know, 90 plus percent of the time. I don't know how much more you can do to make it better, aside from just improving the battery life or making the processor quicker. The, you know, there's not gonna be any major ground shattering um, developments probably until they introduce satellite communications in the watch. That'll be the next like big, big thing where you can have satellite SOS, Garmin inReach or whatever directly from your watch. That'll be a game changer. And that's probably in the next couple of years. Okay, so you think that the, the, the watches are gonna be able to communicate similarly to the satellites like you would on your Garmin inReach Mini, for instance, like it would literally replace it altogether. Is it gonna have that yeah. good of an antenna inside of it? It probably won't be as good <clears throat> as the handheld and they'll probably still be handhelds, but I, 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 you know, I can't imagine that they're not working on that now, trying to get a miniaturized version of that type of communication on your watch. And then what do you use for like your daily driver? Uh, the Apple Watch, because okay. I, you know, I, I love the outdoors and probably half the time in the outdoors and the other half of the time I'm, you know, editing video and doing the stuff that right. we do. Like if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I want to watch to help me navigate in the back country and, you know, do basically what we all want it to do. What, what are you going to tell them to buy? I'd say if you're a casual hiker and you maybe do a bucket list hike every once in a while or a backpacking trip every while, but you know, 90% of your life is spent at a desk or in the front country, an Apple Watch is gonna be a better fit. It's gonna be able to handle the longer hikes and, and the sort of edge cases that you throw at it. But if you're like somebody who works for the Forest Service or you're an ultra runner or somebody who's outside a lot and needs just something that's very rugged, has a longer battery life, and just is dead simple and works no matter what, you're gonna want something like a Garmin device. Okay, so with my, I have the iPhone 14 Pro or whatever it is, and mm -hmm. I can connect SOS, right, with yeah. that. Is there a way to do that through the watch to the phone, do you know? No, but there's something interesting, and I haven't personally tried this, but if, if you look at the Apple documentation, uh, they say this is possible. Uh, so here's the deal. There's something called fall detection on the Apple Watch, right? So if you're mountain biking or if you take like a jarring fall, and the watch thinks that you've fallen yeah. and you can't get up, you know, yeah, you yeah. yourself. Uh, it will try to do an emergency service call for you. And that'll just be 911. But if it can't use 911, according to the Apple help article, it will use the satellite SOS if you have an iPhone 14 with it. So I've heard that the GPS antenna on the Apple Watch is some like three point antenna or something and the Garmin is, it's supposed to be better and it's supposed to be more accurate and like if you're in a canyon, you'll have better access to satellites and what am I just, I mean, is that correct? They're, they're both about the same. I've, I've tested both of these in really challenging environments. There, there's two aspects, there's the antenna, which is basically just a piece of metal and then there is the chipset, which interprets whatever comes in from the antenna and sends a location to the operating system. They both have multi-band, and multi-band is sort of the newer version of GPS. I mean, GPS has been around since the 90s, I believe, and it's almost like the original GPS signals were uh, almost like AM radio. When you have both of your watches sitting on the dashboard of your car and you're about to get out and go on your hike, which watch would you, do you wish you could take every single time? The, the Garmin. The Garmin's a better tool for the outdoors just because you can do everything with wow. the buttons. I am so yeah. surprised you said that. Wow, okay. Yeah. But, but if I was, let's say I'm doing a hike in the front country, like in my county park or something, and I'm maybe playing hooky from work and I still want to be connected, but I also want to hike, yeah. then I would take the Apple Watch. If people are watching this 
and they're like, I'm not spending $800 on a watch, and they don't want to buy the Apple Watch Ultra, but they'd rather buy, let's say, an Apple Watch SE or something along those lines, those apps will still work on that as well. And will it still perform as well? Obviously, the battery is going to be a lot less, but for maybe day hikes and stuff, can they still trust the watch to do the same thing as an Ultra, just less battery? Yeah, if you have an older watch, these apps like Footpath and Work Outdoors will work on all of them. They even work on older Apple Watches. I'm not sure how far back that goes, but you're just gonna have limited battery. The GPS is not gonna work as good. You're not gonna have things like the action button, but you'll still be able to hike. And you know, most people aren't hiking 12 hours. Most people are hiking a few hours. And you know, if you're hiking three, four, five hours, one of the other Apple Watches is a great choice. And it's not gonna be like wearing a big Hunk yeah, of cheese yeah, on, your, exactly. on your wrist, so yeah, uh, you know, definitely <laughs> check out Footpath and Work Outdoors if you just have a watch and you're you want to get outdoors. Those are still great options, and they'll do the job. All right, hey Chris, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. All your insight. Um, I, I'm going to disagree with you though. I, I think I would rather take the Apple Watch. I, I would rather grab it before a Garmin. Although I have limited experience with a Garmin, but anyway, appreciate you coming on. Uh, where can people find you again? Uh, hikingguy.com and at hikingguy on YouTube. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Dan, thank you so much.